Good morning, everybody. Here we go. Okay, so uh, we're going to be looking at the next two steps of two of its evil. The last year isn't, I mean, it's obviously connected by topic, but there's nothing that we really have to know from the last year to be able to understand this one. Um, uh, we're going to look at two different areas in this uh, in this year. We're going to look at the obligation of Tefillah B'Tzibor, whether there's really an obligation to daven with a minion, um, or if there's not an obligation, what is there? Uh, and then the second thing we're going to look at is the space that uh, that's counted for a minion. Um, so we're going to look at the space, and we're going to look at the whether there's an obligation or not. Okay, so, uh, so let's see. The Shulchan Aruch starts off. By, I saw our first question opening up is, is there an obligation to daven with a minion, right? That's the, uh, that's the first question, right? We, have, we know there's an obligation to daven. So the question is, when I daven, do I have to daven with a minion? Um, okay, we, we, it's obvious that we know that davening without a minion is still yotze tefila, right? That's not a, that's not a question. Um, but the question is, do I have this obligation to, uh, to daven with a minion? So Shulchan Aruch says as follows. It says, adam adam lispalo bebeisa keneses. Imhat Sibor, right? So a person should should strive to to daven with a uh, with a tzibor, with a minion um, in a shul, right? That's uh, that's a basic anesses. Let's say he's unable to go to a shul. It's interesting that the shulchan aruch uses the the language of anus, right? He uses it uh, like it's it's like against his will. You know, anus is like uh, I'm sick at home. I can't make it to shul or something like that. There's a hurricane outside, right? That's the that's the language of anus. Um, so we saw that that was that was one of the shitos that we saw last week that a person should daven at the same time the tibor is davening, but from their house alone. Okay, so uh, so there's a, so besides the idea of anus here, the Shulchan Aruch uses a strange language, right? The uh, language of yishtadel, right? Yishtadel means that a person should strive; he should try his uh, his best, right? So that that doesn't necessarily um, connote chiyuv, right? Um, right, that's not uh, that's not the language of a uh, of an obligation. So if uh, if that's not the if that's not if it's not an obligation, uh, so then what is it? Right, what is that? What does that mean? That's our first question. Okay, jumping very strangely, like we usually stick with Rishonim, him, but I go with a contemporary post like with Ramosha Feinstein. So Ramosha Feinstein felt that uh, that davening with a tzibor um, is obligatory. Right, he felt that uh, that you have to daven with a minion. And you have to dive in a, a certain point, uh, a certain amount of distance to get to a minion before you could uh, before you could claim that you're you're exempt from diving with a minion. Um, and his his language is because t- we we saw that tefila b'tzibor is always answered, right? So uh, so since it's always answered, you have to dive in in a in a tie in a, in a way that you're going to be answered. That's the obligation. And since the way you're going to be uh, to be to be answered is with a minion, right? So he says like this. He says, uh, If you're davening as an individual, right, by yourself, so then you're not guaranteed that you're going to be answered, um, and therefore you must daven in a way that you will be answered. That's the way you have to. Uh, you have to dive in. You have to dive in a way that you know you will be answered. So how can I know I'm going to be answered? So the Gemara says that tefillah b'tzibor nishmas tamid that tefillah b'tzibor is always going to be uh, is going to be answered, right? So therefore, that's that's the obligation, right? The obligation is that I have to dive in with a uh, with a tzibor. Okay, is so it, is it possible? Way. Is it possible that when the Shulchan Aruch writes yishtadil instead of chayav, the way halacha works, the way I see it vis-a-vis the working man, Allah is very sympathetic to the needs of a working man. If, if you're working and you need to bench, there's a shortened benching, or Allah looks at the, the, the efforts that a person has to go through. And if it's difficult, it, it sort of uh, minimizes the needs of, that, of the person vis-a-vis halacha. It, it makes it easier for the person to get, to get through it. So in the times of the Shulchan Aruch, the Rishonim, it was Yishtadil. When it comes to the modern times of Rav Moshe, he's saying, you know what? In our day, a person can go to Minyan and it's not a problem. We don't have to compromise. So he says he uses the Lashon of Chiyavur. Well, first of all, I don't know. 
I don't know why it's any more like it was any more difficult for them back then to dive with a minion than it is today. In other words, people still have an obligation to go to work early in the morning, you know, especially in the winter time when when uh, Han is so late. So it's uh, it's not easy to get a minion. So I don't know. You know, I'm not I'm not sure if the facts are are true, um, but I don't know like if the Shulchan Aruch is going to write that he. I think it would be more likely to write that you're chayef to dive with a minion. But there is leniencies if you can't. It doesn't say anywhere in the Shulchan Aruch, you don't have to say all benching. It says you have to say all benching. And then it says that if you're working and you don't have, and your boss doesn't give you a break, so then you only have to bench X amount as opposed to the whole thing. We don't say that you don't have to bench. So right, I don't right, know if that would, be, uh, right. that would be a good explanation. It minimizes the requirement. Right. Okay, so I, think, I, 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 I see think what you you're would saying. Okay. First, high at least power to you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, so the question on Ramosha, Ramosha's idea that because you have because feel of tzibur is nishmas is going to be answered, so therefore you have an obligation to to daven. So where does Ramosha get this from that you have an obligation to to daven in a way that it's going to be answered? Well, where does that come from? Right, that's a, that's that's a pretty big chiddush. Uh, you know, it's a on his part. Um, and then how is tefillah that won't be answered not really tefillah? How is that? Where does Ramosha come up with this? That all of a sudden he's denigrating tefillah that won't be guaranteed to be answered, right? It doesn't mean that my tefillah b'yichidus won't be answered. It just means that it's not guaranteed to be answered in the same way that that tefillah b'tzibor is answered. So why is that all of a sudden that doesn't that's not a good tefillah, right? Where does that? Uh, how does that work? How does that come out to play? Okay, the Aruch Hashulchan says like this. He says that. Uh, that tefillah b'tzibur, he says straight out is derabanan, right? So, but it's mitzvah gedolahi, right? So it's a it's derabanan. So where does where does the Shulchan come up that it's derabanan, right? Now you can't just say things are derabanan if they're not daraisa. They they actually have to be derabanan, right? It's not just, right. You can say something is is a good idea. It's nice to do, right? So that you could say that's easy enough to say. You don't really need any any big uh, moves to do that. But to just simply say that tefillah b'tzibur is uh, is derabanan out of nowhere. Right, so you have to show a derabanan, show where show where the rabbis were uh, were instituted at Tzibur B'tzibur. Okay, so we're going to look at Rabbi Zucker's um, ex, uh, his uh, his piece on Tzibur again. He says as follows. So I'm going to read it inside. He says, "Im ze yesh lefarish hevdel ika be mitzvah Tzibur v'ritzui Tzibur." Okay, so he says he, he introduces two concepts. There's a concept of mitzvah Tzibur that we're familiar with. We have an obligation to die. Right, that we know. Okay, and then he has ritzui tefillah. Ritzui tefillah, the idea of, of ritzui in, in, uh, in the Torah, we see from korbanos, right? That a korban, when, it's, when it follows the, the, the procedures that are, that are, that are um, laid out for how you, one gives a korban, so we call that ritzui. It's, it's, uh, it's given ritzui. That means it's accepted, right? Okay, so that's, and so he says the same concept applies by tefillah. You have the mitzvah of tefillah, and then you have ritzui tefillah. In other words, there's a way to ensure that your tefillah is accepted, okay? And that's called ritzui tefillah. Mitzvah's tefillah, he la'avod es Hashem, k'derech l'shlem asodom, right? The mitzvah's tefillah is to, to serve God, right? That's tefillah. Tefillah, the, the pasuk that tells us about the mitzvah tefillah, there's no, there's no pasuk in the Torah that says you shall pray, right? The mitzvah in the Torah says that, uh, that you should serve God. And then we learn out, ezehi avod es shebeleif, zuhi tefillah, right? So we understand that, that avodas Hashem, avodas Hashem is tefillah, and that's how we get to the uh, to the idea that there's tefillah. Ubozeh shaper ika kiyom mitzvah tefillah, beni mitzvah nishmas alok. So it doesn't make a difference if your tefillah is going to be answered or not. That's the mitzvah tefillah. Mitzvah tefillah stand up, daven. That's the mitzvah tefillah. Okay. The zohi lumas ritzui tefillah, and that's that's separate from this idea of ritzui tefillah. The heino tefillah san tefillah hanishmas. Ritzui tefillah is tefillah that's going to be answered. This is a whole separate whole separate thing. Tefillah that's going to be answered is different than the mitzvah of tefillah. Ela shemekevan she'etzem ha-tefillah hi amida lefnei ha-shkida. He's the velchas tefillah, right? What's, what is the etzem, the idea of tefillah? The idea of tefillah is that you're standing before God. That, that's what tefillah is, okay? So, uh, right, so, so he says, uh, the tefillah ha-nishmas have a mitzvah tefillah b'shay musa. But tefillah that's going to be answered is complete tefillah. Right, we have this in halacha a lot of times. You have in halacha, you have, you have the mitzvah, and then you have the mitzvah bishle musa. 
It doesn't make it doesn't mean that the mitzvah done not bishle musa isn't isn't. I'll give you an example where the rabbi uses that. The rabbi tzitzis. The rabbi says in tzitzis, he says the mitzvah of wearing tzitzis is is tzitzis, like what we wear all the time. And then the mitzvah bishle musa is to have is to have tcheles, right? If you have tcheles, the mitzvah is bishle musa. It doesn't. The rabbi holds that if you don't have tcheles on your tzitzis, it doesn't mean that you're not fulfilling the mitzvah of tzitzis. You are, but it's not bishle musa. Okay, so the same type of framework. Rabbi Zucker is introducing here when it comes to uh, when it comes to tefillah. There's tefillah that you're yotzei davening, right? That's standing before God, and then there's tefillah b'shlei musa shenochachos Hashem kaviyachol b'shmias atefillah have a darga ma'alsa shal lifnei shchina. And what is that? Now you're at a different level standing before the shchina, right? It's a it's a higher level of standing before God. And therefore, any time that you that you can daven with tzibor, a person must daven with the tzibor, right? Because they have the opportunity of davening bishlei musa, right? Of davening in a complete way. So if you have the opportunity of davening in a complete way, then you must, right? A person must uh, must. He says the language with sarich adam. Remember, if we, if we remember last week. That was the language that Rambam used. He says a person must. Right? And we asked the question we asked last week, on, that we asked this week on the Shulchan Aruch, we asked last week on the Rambam, why doesn't he use the word chiv? So here we see. Right? So uh, he says, Mishum kol inyan zet ika kiyom nifra shal tzvil v'tzibor v'uan yona shal, right? So the, there's a separate kiyom. In other words, a kiyom is when you fulfill the mitzvah, right? So there's a separate kiyom when it comes to davening with the tzibor. Right, so I I, I, I daven by myself in my house. Right, so I fulfill the mitzvah of tefillah. I've been mekayim the mitzvah of tefillah, but when I daven, I've been mekayim mitzvah tefillah b'shlei musa. It's a it's a different mila. It's a different uh, it's a different level. So that's a separate idea, and that's what I accomplished by davening with tefillah b'tzibor. Right, so there's so th- there's this two is aspects. Not, this is not extra credit. This is part of the mitzvah. It's not, like, no, it's not like just a, another another gradation of it. There's, you can fulfill the mitzvah, right? Every mitzvah has a way of fulfilling the mitzvah. And then there's fill, fulfilling the mitzvah in its complete way, right? In its complete form. This is not right? a hadrin. Not, not, there's no better or worse. It's just, it's a it's complete form. This, this is the complete way of doing it. And then there's fulfilling the mitzvah. It's not related in any way, shape, or to to mahadrin, to... So levels, there's there's a my, there's a greater kiyum by fulfilling each mitzvah b'shlei musa, right? And that's what I should strive for. Davening that's what I want to do. Davening no, 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 no. It, 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 unless the rabbi is going to write b'shlei musa, then then no, right? Hanates is just is the, is the proper time of davening. The rambam just as we're, if you, if you bring it up, the rambam holds that any shachris after hanates. Right after sunrise, the rabbi, he, this is Shita, he holds his Bidi So that's not what this is. The rabbi doesn't hold Tfil Biyachidus as, as Bidi Right? The rabbi, oh, the rabbi himself, we don't hold this way, but the rabbi holds that if you, that the only way you could dive in Hanates is if you woke up late. And now I want to know, can I dive in? Can I still dive in? Right? But the idea, if you would ask the rabbi, can I set my alarm to not dive in Hanates? The rabbi would be like, What's, well, why would you ever do that? Right, it'd be like uh, it doesn't make any sense. After Han, it says only b'diavet. That's the Rabbam Shita, right? That's not uh, that's not how we hold. So that's not considered b'shlei oh. musa. No, no, that's the Rabbam holds as the chiv. Chiv is daven and Han eats, and if, and if you don't daven and Han eats, now the question is, can I still be yotzei? Mm. Okay, Rabbi, so, uh, is it, Rabbi, is it standard if there's a mitzvah that has a shlei musa that there's an obligation if you have the opportunity that you have to do the shlei musa? It's it's logical, right? That's a, again. I don't know if every single time I, I can't remember. And in fact, I would assume not because I don't remember the Rambam saying it. Not that I have his memory, but I'll say. But I I I I, I like remember it well enough to uh, it would stick out in my mind that the Rambam says that like you have to strive to have tchelas on your tzitzis, right? That would be that's like the Rambam doesn't write that, right? He just writes that uh, that tzitzis with tchelas in it is the mitzvah bishlei musa. I think he uses his exact language as kihochasa is what he uses. And we assume that that means Bishle Musa, or maybe he uses both, both, uh, both terms, right? But that's uh, that's idea. So, so it's, a, it's that similar framework, 
But here, then we understand why the Rambam writes according or the way Rabbi Zucker is putting it, right? That uh, that a person's answered, right? That one, one's going to be answered when their tefillah. That's that's what allows your tefillah to be answered, right? And therefore, it just makes sense that a person would strive their very best to be able to daven um, with a with tefillah b'tzibur. Okay, so to, to this is just the, this first part, just to sum up here. Right, so and, and to explain it, so the svara would be that tefillah is an obli- as an obligation is, is a source of debate. Right, there's a there's a, is a is a debate here. Right, so and the debates, what does it? Say? It centers around the understanding of ritzui tefillah, right, of this second level of of tefillah that that our Zikr introduces. Right, how does one understand ritzui tefillah? That tefillah will be accepted. Right, how do we how do we understand that? Right. So the more obligatory one understands Ritsui tefillah, making sure that your tefillah is done in a way that it's going to be accepted, so then they'll see minion is obligatory, right? That's how we, uh, right? So that's, that's how we're going to, to see it, right? And therefore, like to answer the question, if somebody would say, is tefillah but tzibur obligatory, right? So you would say that the only advantage, which is our opening question, right? The only advantage of tefillah but tzibur is that it, it, it allows more so than tefillah of Yechidis for one's tefillah to be answered, to have this Ritzui tefillah, right? So if I view tefillah, the tefillah, Ritzui tefillah as obligatory, so then tefillah with a minion, tefillah with a minion is going to be obligatory, right? Tefillah with is going to be obligatory. If I don't see it as obligatory, if I see it as, as just, right? I don't like the word just, but if I see it as, as Mishle Musa, but not necessarily as a, as a Chiyuv, Right, as let's say the mitzvah of tefillah is a chiyuv, so then uh, and I'm not going to, uh, yeah, I'm not going to, yeah, I'm not going to see it as a uh, as a, as a, as a uh, chiyuv. It won't be a chiyuv for me at all. Okay, so uh, okay, so the question is now. Uh, let's go through the our, our actual questions here. Does the shulchan aruch's words yishtadel mean chiyuv? Right. So uh, so it's impossible to know exactly what he meant by it, but it makes sense to to think. That, uh, that if he wanted it to be obligatory, he would have written the word chiyuv, right? I mean, it's not like he shies away from the word chayev in his writings. But, uh, but it also is very clear that he's saying that a person should see it as close to an obligation as possible. Now he's saying ishtado. He's not saying this is like a good idea. He's saying that a person should really strive hard to be able to, uh, to die with a minion. So it's not the classic type of chiyuv that we're used to seeing in a halachic framework, right? A halachic framework we're used to seeing yeah, it's a tiring mitzvah, it's a chiyav daraisa, it's a chiyav darabanon, there's a minhag, right? Something along those lines. Those are the classic categories. Tefillah of tzibur, it seems, to the Rambam and to the Shulchan Aruch, don't fit into the classic categories. They don't, at least not to the ones that we're, we're familiar with. Here it seems to be that this is something that a person should... Uh, should sh- okay? Um, so now let's try to understand where Ramosha was coming from. How did Ramosha understand Tefillah of tzibur? Right, because remember, Rav Moshe said that the fact that tefillah b'tzibur is nishmas tamid is going to be answered. Right, so therefore it's obligatory. Right, that's that was his language. He held that it was a it was a chiyav mamish. He held you had to you have to dive into tefillah with a minion. Right, Rav Moshe was asked the question, and he said yes, you have a chi, you have a chiyav to dive in with a with a tefillah with a minion. And why? Because the tefillah is going to be answered with a minion, and tefillah has to be done. In a way that it's going to be answered. So, with Rabbi Zucker's like uh, idea of ritzui tefillah, we can understand Rav Moshe very easily, right? Because what's Rav Moshe saying? Rav Moshe is saying that the way we define the obligation of tefillah is ritzui. That is tefillah. Tefillah is setting you up. This is how Rav Moshe would explain tefillah. Tefillah is a way of approaching God, standing before the Shechina in a way that you're going to be answered. So, if there's a way I'm going to be answered, that's the way I have to daven. I must daven in that way. If I don't stand before God in a way that can, then I'm not fulfilling my obligation, right? So therefore, I have to down with the minion because that is going to be the uh, the ritzui tefillah. And how it feel not be answered would not be would not be obligatory because or Moshe would say it lacks Mishlei Musa, right? So uh, right, and according to the Aruch Shulchan, right, right here, who says that it's Durabanan, right? So uh, so he must have held that at some point along the way. The Rabbanon came along. I don't know where he gets it from, right? And I see, I mean, he, he quotes one case. He says, right, there's an answer of, uh, there's an answer of, 
of, uh, of freeing one slave. If a person has a slave, you're not allowed to free the slave. Once, you, once the slave is freed, so then we're talking about a non-Jewish slave. Once you free a non-Jewish slave, so then the slave becomes obligated in, uh, in mitzvah star button like a woman, right? But a slave somehow, can, I don't know the sugi so well, I don't want to like, yeah, but he could be counted towards a minion. So there's a case in the Gemara where they had nine people and, uh, and somebody had a slave there and they freed the slave. So that would, that's normally an isser. So how could, he, how could he do something that's us? Or there's a classic case, classic question that you showed him asked. He said the reason is, is because there was a mitzvah der Abanon of tefillah b'tzibor. So he was able to free him for that, uh, for that obligation. So it could be he's working sort of like on a process of elimination, right? What's the only way that, we could, that he could have freed the slave is if there was an, a, a, a chi of der Abanon. So even though we don't see any evidence in the chi of der Abanon of tefillah b'tzibor, right? We don't have a Gemara that says der Abanon or metakein tefillah b'tzibor, the only way it would make sense is if there was an obligation and therefore that must be what the case is. That has to be the logic of Yerachel Shofar. Okay. Let's go on to the next part. Rabbi, just one question. Would Rabbi Moshe say if you didn't uh, dive in with the Tzibor, but it was accepted, then you did fulfill the, the mitzvah? Yeah, you would never know, though. Of course you would never know, but like... Right. Right, right, but would so, that yeah, be, so like, is, is the mitzvah to to make sure to guarantee that you're um fulfill it or is it to have it fulfilled? Well, so I'm saying so it would have to be the first way because you can never know if your tefillah is gonna right. I'm saying like on a practical sense, right? Allah is practical. So in a practical sense, how would I ever how would I ever know if my tefillah is gonna be answered? Which means that the only way you can you can answer the, your question is by saying, I have to set myself up in a way. Right, where the question I would ask your Moshe is, and I assume the answer is yes to this, it's almost obvious, but the question I would ask your Moshe is, if, I, um, if I'm onus, if I can't daven with a minion, so then, and I'm davening b'yechidus, have I been yotze my mitzvah? So there, Ramosha would, I mean, he would have to say, yes, you're yotze the mitzvah of tefillah, but it's a question on, uh, and I would ask your Moshe, is, okay, so if I'm, if I'm onus and I can't daven with a minion, so I'm not setting up my minion, my davening as one that's going to be answered, right? So why am I davening? Am I davening because, right? And uh, if I ask Ramosha, my tefillah is not going to be answered. So I'm not, right? So, so now Ramosha would have to come up with a lower level of tefillah that one would still be obligated in. It would be isn't, a good question on Ramosha Svara. Isn't that level, you'll be Yotze, the mitzvah of tefillah, but not Bishle Musa? I don't know if Ramosha has that concept. That's Rabbi Zucker's idea. If, if you take Rabbi Zucker's I idea... I understand, but say I'm saying, Ramosha's, so that would fit in for Rabbi Moshe as well. Why not? Because Rabbi Zucker doesn't hold that there's a... In Rabbi Zucker's Svara, there's no chiyuv of davening bishle Musa. In Rabbi Zucker's Svara, there's, there's a tzorech to do so, but not a chiyuv. Ramosha is setting up that there's a chiyuv. So if there's a chiyuv and I can't do the chiyuv, so then what's the point in doing the next thing? That's what I would ask. That's what I would ask Ramosha. My, that would be my question on Ramosha. We don't know any anywhere in Halacha. There's not a, a, a breakdown or delineation where the where the Rambam or the Shulchan Aruch says Sarich, all the different cases where it says Sarich instead of Chayav. We we don't have a study like that. I, I don't know. You, you could do it a search easily enough. Yeah, you could do like a I'm search sure on someone. Online. Someone well, must have done research. I don't know. I, we're not usually so medayik in the in the language of the Shulchan Aruch. The Rambam, yeah, but uh, I don't know. The Shulchan Aruch, we're not usually so medayik in his language. Okay. Uh, here, so let's look at the next thing in terms of the the space of the minion. Okay. So the Shulchan Aruch says, "Sarch shiu kol asar b'makom echad," right? That everybody has to be in one place and the tzibur with them. Okay. So here you have you have two different questions. You have, you have, when it comes to space, when it comes to minion, the first question that you have is, um, what, what, what uh, okay. let me put it this way. The question is, where does, where does the whole minion have to be standing to count as a minion, right? That's question number one, right? So in other words, what, what level of space, how spread out could the 10 people be and they'd still be considered a minion? The second question you have is, if I, the individual, am standing somewhere far away from the minion, Right, there are 10 people over there and I'm over here. Do I count as part of the minion? So question number one is like in space A, if you have part of the minion, in space B, you have another part of the minion, can they join together to be the, to be the minion? Question B is if one person's in space A 
and 20 people are in space B, does one person join in with the other people? Those are two different questions. My, my question is going to be more conceptual. My question is going to be, why does space matter when it comes to a minion? Right? What's the, what's the need for, for space when it comes to a minion? Right? We already saw that there's an idea in halacha that if I can't make it to show and I can't make it with a minion, I can daven in my house at the same time that the minion's davening, and I have some sort of connection to the minion, right? We already have that idea, right? So, so there, there is, there is a, an argument to be made that Tefillah but Tzibor doesn't necessarily all have to be in the same space. Okay, so, uh, so Mishra Bura says, I feel it on Roy and right? Even if they don't see each other, just because they're in one house, that's, that's good enough, right? And even if one of them is, is it, let's say some of them are in one room and some of them are in another room, then they wouldn't count, even if there's an opening between them, right? But, uh, right, so it says, as long as the, if there's a mechitza there, it doesn't work, right? So, uh, right, so it, they have to be in, in one joint space, even if they're not able to see each other. There, there has to be one space that they can consider, this is joint, we're joined together. Okay. Um, okay, let's see. So the... Uh, here you have in uh, the Shulchan Aruch says like this. He says, Misha Omer Achori Let's say I'm standing behind the Shul and there's a window, right? And even if the window is a couple of stories high, right? And even if it's not that wide of a window, right? But, uh, right, but I could, they could see me, right? So then I count as part of the minion, okay? Right? And then he said that if some people are inside and some people are outside and the Shulchan Tzibor is inside, right? So he connects everybody together, Okay. Uh, right, so then you have you have this went through in the uh, in the mission of the Gemara that we went through that uh, about Korban Pesach, right? And how much of Korban Pesach we went through this in the Yishin introductory year? I don't want to go through the whole thing, but how much of the uh, of uh, like people count in certain boundaries, right? So whether you're inside the doorway, you're outside the doorway, is that considered one group, right? With Korban Pesach, there's a uh, there's a uh, there's a there's, there's a need for everybody to be together. Um, at Leil Seder when it comes to the Korban Pesach, right? So, and we say, right, the Gemara says, These, the same laws that we saw by, by Korban Pesach apply to Tefillah. And Rabbi Shulban Levi disagrees, and he says you could have an iron wall, right, an iron wall between them, and that doesn't stop their, their prayers for, uh, for Tefillah, right? So, but the Gemara is really putting it in if you don't go by every shul of Levi, um, and you go by uh, by Rav, so then uh, so then it's it counts even for uh, for tefillah is all determined by by doorways, right? Tosfos here says uh, says he says that that it's uh, that a mechitza doesn't stop you um, from answering kaddish and kedusha, but you don't count for the minion, meaning that's our differentiation, right? Tosfos is saying that I can participate in a minion if I'm if I'm distant. Right, if I'm distant from the rest of the minion, but so I can answer Kaddish and Kedusha, which I, I can't just do that on my own, right? I can't just say Yehesh Meirav on my own, standing in my house by myself, assuming that that's when the the tibor is going to be doing it. So, can I, if I'm walking by a shul, if I'm separated from a shul, can I just answer Yehesh Meirav? So, there the answer is yes, you can answer Kaddish, you can answer Ami, but I don't count as one of the members of the minion by being outside, right? So, I can participate in the minion, but I don't, uh, I don't count as a uh, as one of the uh, as one of the minion, as long as there's nothing that uh, that interrupts um, between them. Okay, then you have the uh, you have the Rashba, right? So wait, where, where did my Rashba go? I don't have a Rashba here. Okay, I don't know. Hold on one second. Sorry. Oh no, I didn't. I did, uh, sorry. First, first the Yerach Shulchan. Okay, so you have the uh, you have the Yerach Shulchan here. Okay, so. Uh, excuse me. So the Yerach Shulchan. Um, Holds that the, the the ten, the ten joined together. So he has this idea of mechitza of barzel, right? And things don't, uh, right? So same idea. He's just essentially quoting Tosfos. Okay. Then you have the Rashba. The Rashba is long. It's a good thing we did in the introductory shear, uh, so we don't have to do it now. But the uh, the Rashba basically holds that all people join together as long as they can be, as long as they can see each other. Where does he get this from? Right? Where do we pull these halachos from? From Minyan? Right, so they were not pulling them out of nowhere. So it comes from zimun, right? When I, when I have the same idea when it comes to eating together in a zimun, right? So I have a bunch of people eating in a room together. 
can they be mitzarev? Can they join together to count for a uh, for a zimun? Right. So those are the laws that we're pulling out of, right? Because there are no whole laws really based in the Gemara about this stuff, right? We have this Gemara Psachim, but there are no detailed Gemaras that talk about this. So when the Rishonim are trying to figure it out, they're relying heavily on the laws of uh, of zimun for for these halachos. Okay. Then you have uh, then you have the Shulchan Aruch, which introduces this idea. Of uh, as he says, right? This is the laws of Zimon, which they bought them, mix us rum and elo salem and star fossil Zimon. So, if the two groups see each other, even if they're in two different houses, as long as they see each other, that counts for Zimon. But if there's a waiter that is serving both groups, right? So, imagine you have two houses and you have like a, a waiter going in between the two, right? right? By the way, this this has become very lamaisa on a Zimon level. Um, one of the things that they had in one, one of the like iterations of, of Israel's lockdowns was for weddings. You were only allowed to have a certain amount of people, but then they allowed like groups of people at weddings as long as the groups didn't combine. So you could have like 20 people at a wedding or you could have 40 people at a wedding if the 20 people were kept in their own space. So you could develop like two different tents. And then the chuppah was able to be seen from the two different tents and the groups of 20 didn't mix. They stayed in their respective tents. Um, so then the question would be, could those 20, could those 40 people join in one zimun? So it seemed from here, right, that, uh, that they could because they could, they had a waiter. They, they had the same waiter going in between them. So then it would seem to be okay. Um, who would start from, right? Pods. The waiters, what? Pods, P-O-D-S. Pods, right. All right. Okay. Now this is this became like the whole idea, the whole debate when it came to port to porch minyanim, right? What we had here in Israel, when you had uh, people davening on porches and davening in front yards. So then you had Rishus Rabim that that interrupted, right? You had uh, you had the public s- uh, space that interrupted between the groups. So could they count really as a minyan? That was the question, right? Because of Taz, Lav Daf, Rishus Rabim, Taz said it doesn't have to be. Like a, a full, like you know, Times Square in between the two groups, right? But it could be just as long as you had 16 amos between them, right? Or even just a, a small pack, that was enough to, to break up the groups. Okay. So uh, so what's this debate about what qualifies as a as a rishus and what qualifies as a uh, as a hefsek? Okay, so to answer our questions, right, we have uh, this idea of Asubi Mikta coming up soon in the parsha. Right, that you have a uh, you have a mitzvah of building the uh, the mishkan, and then and then uh, right. So the sefer chinuch explains lidnos bias hashem hashem kol marshinim akrivim shem karbanos avelov. Right, so the whole idea of building the mishkan and the base of mikdash was to was to give karbanos. So shantia aliyah l'rego. That's where we go. Be aliyah l'rego. The kibbutz ko yisrael v'chal shana and all all bnei yisrael join together every year. Shem rasuli mikdash. Like it says, you should build a uh, a mikdash. There's also a mitzvah kol asima kalim atzrichem a base kel avoda. Right, so this idea. Of a, of a house that's built for a voda. You go on a menorah by Shulchan is beach of Sharpeton. Okay, so the Rabbim says, Kol makom sheish bo asara mi Yisrael, right? So anytime that you have 10 Jews, they have to build a, uh, they have to build a shul, right? And, they, and that shul is called that place. They have to play to make a place for Tfilo. Mokom zindigar basal kineses, right? So they have to build a place for, um, for Tfilo. Bayes shikansu, Bol tefila, right? A, a house that they that they join in together for tefila. Okay. Um, okay. So that's uh, right. So that's a, that's the idea of building a that's the chiyuv of building a shul, right? And then the Gemara says, "Well, the mikdash mat." I'm ready to go, but the essence is about the drushes of Babel, right? So the whole idea of a shul is a fascinating. Like, if we, I don't I don't usually do this in shul, like in terms of a Jewish a, a perspective on Jewish history. But there were no shuls until really until the first base of Mikdash was destroyed, right? They didn't have shuls. People davened in like the fields. There was no idea of building a shul. So when they got to when they got to Babel, so that's when they said, okay, we need to build shuls. We don't have a base of Mikdash anymore. It's a it's like a fascinating like uh, you know time in Jewish history. You know, we always talk about if you go back in time at one time in Jewish history, where would you like to go? So the the, the time the Jewish history was mo- I think was most transformed. During the first Gullus in Babel, after the destruction of the first base of Mikdash, that's where like the Siddur was written. We didn't have Tfilos. We didn't have everybody just got together in a field and composed their own davening. And then when they were done, they walked home. That was it. Like that was all of davening. That was Tfilos, you know. And you did as many times as you wanted to. 
right? You didn't have, right? The whole idea of a shul was only created as this mikdash mat, right? And this is the idea of mikdash shaytiro, that you have a mitzvah to have all of a mikdash. Ubizman hazeh, a basic in essence, mikdash mat. The shul is the mikdash mat, right? That's the, uh, that's what we have. We have this, the basic mikdash today is the basic in essence, okay? So, uh, right? So that's the idea. So, so how do we understand on a conceptual level? How do we understand this, this space that we dedicate for Tefillah B'Tzibor? Again, on a, on a conceptual level. We're not trying to understand a lot of Maisa here, but, uh, but on a conceptual level, right? So the idea, what's the idea of Tefillah B'Tzibor? The idea of Tefillah B'Tzibor is to have the Tzibor joined together for Tefillah, right? That's the, uh, that's the idea, okay? And that seems to be, at, at first glance, that would seem to be outside the realm of space. It wouldn't matter where they're joined. It's just the fact that the 10 people are joined for, for tefillah, right? So, but that's, that's a misnomer. That's not true, right? So there's, a, there's an idea of building a base on mikdash, right? That is, that is a, that's a, a Torah concept, is building a, a makom, um, le'avodah Hashem, right? There's a place for the avodah, right? Whether that avodah is in its ideal form in korbanos, or if they, uh, the avodah in its ideal form is a, uh, is a shul, Right, so uh, right, that's what the Rambam says that the shul is the place of tefillah hatzibor. Right, so uh, and that shared space is what joins the the tzibor together. Right, as opposed to just assuming that the tzibor is joined together by the fact that the ten people are together. Right, it's the place that's joining the people together. Okay, so uh, and and therefore, right, you need the space to connect the people. That's what the, that's what the space is doing. The space is actually connecting the people. Okay, so so we had asked, right? Uh, you know, why does why does uh, space matter when it comes to tefillas tefillas and tzibor, right? So so space is a is the essential component of tefillah and tzibor because it is the thing that joins the tzibor together, right? Now you say, okay, maybe a tzibor is still together, um, you know, even without a without a, a, a space dedicated. But in its ideal form, right? Its ideal form, the, the shul, the the makom tefilas hatzibor is what's joining the tzibor together. That is what's what's uh, what's putting the tzibor together. Is that the same as saying that since tefila is in place of karbanos, just like karbanos were in a space called the base hamikdash, we need tefila to be similar? I don't think so, because you had tefila with tzibor even before base hamikdash. Right. No, but I'm saying now that we don't have carbonos, tefillah is supposed to take the place of carbonos. As long as tefillah is taking place of carbonos, it has to mimic carbonos in a sense in different say it the ways. Same way. I wouldn't say that tefillah is taking the taking the, the place of carbonos. I wouldn't say it that way because it's it, it's not. I don't know if we if we say the nashlein parim sefaseinu that uh, that the the reciting of the Korbanos, right? The Psukim is what like, the Korbanos that we say before Baruch Shemar, that's taking the place of the Korbanos. The Tefillah was created, the amount of Tefillos, the, the, you know, the, the number of Tefillos and the time of Tefillos, that was done in, in, uh, in, in like a correlation to when the Korbanos were, but not as a, not as a, uh, what's as a replacement for Tefillos. That wasn't done only when Korbanos were gone. That was done even when we had Korbanos. So I don't think that the tefillah can negative car- carbonos means that they're in place of or replacement of carbonos. I think it means that they were instituted in correlation to the carbonos. The substitute for carbonos are the psukim that we recite of the carbonos. That's a, that's a two separate thing. So I don't think that it would apply. So they, therefore, I don't think that the, you know, the, the analogy here to tefillah but Seymour would work. Um, okay. So what's the debate about what qualifies as a reshusser and what's a hefseik in the space, right? So there are, there are principles in Kolotar Kula of reshus, of what cast, ca, constitutes a space, right? This is across the entire Torah. So, uh, so the debate is about those principles. It's not really related to tefillah b'tzibor, right? When, when people are talking about the space of whether this counts as a tzibor or not, they're really referring back to the ideas of Rosh Hashanah Rabbim, Rosh Hashanah Yochid, right? Tzira for Zimon, right? And these are Kolatar Kula issues. These are issues of what defines a space, not what defines a space for Tzila B'Tzibor. And then we apply those halachos to Tzila B'Tzibor. But they're not, they're not, um, they're not like, you know, in, inherent 
in the laws of Tila Batsibor. Okay, so uh so Tila Batsibor as an interruption of two wider space, that's not that's not talking about Tila Batsibor necessarily. Okay, that's rather talking about um, the ideas of space. Okay, so I think that's uh yeah, if we sum up the two swaras that we had. Um so in terms of the in terms of our swara on uh on whether there's an obligation of tefillah or not. So there we said it's about ritzui tefillah, right? The more you have ritzui tefillah, uh, you know, the more you, you know you have uh, you have an obligation of tefillah and tzibur. And then the next thing you have is a uh, is an obligation is the svar in terms of space of tefillah. We want to say that space is what joins the the tefillah to uh, you know, the, tfilo, the the individuals together as a tefillah satzibur. That's what I would say. Those are our two svaras. I give a pitch for next week's shear. Because it's uh it's it was really is a fascinating uh, I don't know what to call it experience but there's a uh, there's a, a Breslover like well, these massive Breslover they they like a famous musician moved into uh, Mitzpe like uh, so it, because of, he moved in the summer because of Corona I don't I don't see my next door neighbors let alone my you know new people on in the town but we have WhatsApp groups together so uh, so they had like a Yom Hatzfila. Uh, I don't know if they had it in, I don't know where it was, but they had a Yomat Tefillah last week or two weeks ago um, for Corona. And so in our like town WhatsApp group, so somebody like said, you know, it's a Yomat Tefillah. So somebody said, it's also Yoma mask. Like you should put your mask on, you know, like, uh, so, so this Breslover is a great guy from my experience with him so far over WhatsApp. Yeah. You know, so he said, no, Tefillah is so important. And then he quoted a Gemara and uh, I quoted like this, one of the Chassidish Rebbe's, like interpretation of the Gemara, but the Chassidish Rebbe is like asked, yeah, you know, we'll see it next week. I mean, we're not going to see the Chassidish Rebbe, we'll see the Gemara, but, uh, but the Chassidish Rebbe like went, I mean, he literally went against the Gemara. The Gemara asks a question, gives an answer, and the Chassidish Rebbe gave an answer opposite the Gemara's answer, like literally opposite the Gemara's answer. So I wrote back right away, like, that's absurd. The Gemara gives an answer to that question, and the Gemara's answer is exactly the opposite. So it got this whole question of, of which is greater the mitzvah of tefillah or the mitzvah of Talmud Torah. And that, so that became like the debate. He brought this, the Bresler brought Gemara's, I brought Gemara's. And then it turns out it's like a big machokas you shown him. It's not like a, we are little people arguing over something that's much bigger. So I spent, uh, I spent the week on learning this. It's a fascinating, fascinating topic. Um, and it's going to veer very quickly off the, the debate between me and the Bresler and get into the Gemara's and the Rishonim, obviously. But, uh, but uh, yeah, so it's very good. Um, but yeah, so that's next week's year. Yeah, it'll be good. So I'll put out Billy Nether, the uh, the Myra Kumos on Tuesday, and hopefully on Wednesday put out the uh, the introductory year, and then we'll have year on Sunday. Okay. Cool. Have a great week, Thank everybody. You. Thank you. My pleasure. See you guys.